Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and in this video I'd like to show you how to use CakePHP schemas. Uh, schemas are just like Ruby on Rails' migrations, so it's a database agnostic way to create, delete, and edit your tables in your database uh, using PHP instead of SQL. You run the PHP files using Cake's console, uh, the schema shell. So we'll be using our Tupblog database that we've used in the previous videos as well as the Tupblog2 application that we baked in the previous videos. So here in your text editor, under the config folder, you'll see a folder called schema, and this folder will hold all of your schemas. There's currently three in here by default, one for access control lists, another for translations, and another one to hold sessions in your database. Uh, we'll create our own schemas here We'll generate a few of them to create a user's table and modify that user's table. So the first thing you need to do is pull up a command line prompt or a terminal and change directories into your uh, CakePHP application. Mine's under w uh, WAMP www.tupblog2. And once in there, you can run the schema shell just by running cake schema. And let's make this a little bigger so we can see everything. And when you run cake schema, it gives you basic usage. So you can run cake schema followed by one of its commands and then any optional arguments or parameters. Uh, the parameters are listed first, and the commands are listed afterwards. The commands that you'll use the most are generate. Uh, generate creates a new schema file for you based on the tables in your database for which that you have created models for. If you use the generate command along with the hyphen f parameter, it'll generate a schema file based on all of your tables regardless of your models. So most of the time you'll want to use the f parameter just in case. Uh, the create command will drop or create tables based on your schema file. So if you have a schema file uh, that specifies a user table, it'll first ask you if you'd like to, to drop that table. You can select yes or no and then afterwards it'll ask if you'd like to create that table and you can select yes or no. So the create command can be used as a two-in-one uh, you specify which schema file to use by using the hyphen s parameter, which is up here. It stands for snapshot. Each time you generate a new schema file, the first one will be called schema.php, the second one will be called schema underscore 2.php underscore 3, and so on as you create schema files, and those numbers are your snapshot number. So when you run the schema create hyphen s then you pass it the snapshot number of the schema file you would like to use. Uh, the last one is schema update and this will alter the tables based on your schema file. For instance you can add new rows to a table uh, and you just run schema update and you can use the hyphen s parameter again and pass it the snapshot number just like you did the create, uh, the create command. So let's try a few of these and we'll generate our first schema file. So we can just run cake schema generate, and that'll create our schema.php. And if we refresh this folder, we see we have schema.php, and we can open that up. Here we go. So as you can see, schema files are just uh, PHP classes. They extend the cake schema class. Each one of your tables in your database is represented by a attribute inside of your class file. So we have an attribute here for our comments table. We also have an attribute here for our table. Each field is part of an array. It's a key value pair. The key is the name of the field and the value are the options that you can set for that field. For instance, you can set its type you can say whether or not it's null, what the default value is. You can set that it's a primary key. 
This also makes it auto increment. Uh, you can set its length. You can set other table parameters such as the car set. You can set the engine to use here at the end. So let's create our own schema file to add a user's table. So we'll close this, go back to our command line, and we'll run cake schema generate, and we'll create a new one. And as you can see, it detects that we already have a schema file. And so whenever you're creating a second one, you want to choose to make a snapshot by using the s command. And that'll generate a schema underscore 2.php. So let's open that up. And here we go. So we're not wanting to edit the comments or the posts table. So we're going to just delete those out. And we'll start by creating a new attribute called users, since this is going to be for a users table. And we set that equal to an array. And we want an ID field. And we make its value another array. And we can set its type to be an integer. We can set it's null to be false, and we can make this a primary key, and that also makes it auto increment as well. Afterwards, we can give our users table a first name field. We'll set its type to be a string. We can set its default value to be, let's set it to null set null equal to false again and we can set its length to be say 50 and we'll give us a password field as well and it's going to have pretty much the same options so type these out real quick need to put another L there and we're going to set its length to be 40. Uh, whenever, in the future videos, we're going to use the auth component and it uses the password field in your database or your table. Uh, you should always set this to at least to be 40 characters because the auth component will hash your passwords as they get saved in there to be a 40 character string. So you want to make sure that you have enough room for that. Even if you limit passwords to 15 characters, uh, when they make it, it's still going to be hashed out to 40. So I think that should be good for now. This will create our users table when we run our schema create command. So let's try it out. This is schema underscore 2. So we'll run cake schema create and we're going to use the s snapshot parameter and pass it to because we're wanting to run the schema underscore 2 file. And here you go, you can see that if you already had a users table, you could choose to drop it. It asks if you'd like to drop the users table. Since we don't have it, we're going to say no, because we don't want to drop, we want to create it. But if you did want to drop it, here's how you could do that. And then it asks, are you sure you want to create the users table? So we'll say yes. And it creates it. Let's make sure. Go to our database and refresh it. And there's our users table. And as you can see, it has our ID field. It's an int type. It auto increments as a primary key. We get our first name field. It's a var car set to 50 like we set. And our password var car set to 40. So let's try creating another schema file so we can edit our users table. So back here in our command line, we can run cake schema generate. And actually, I did that wrong. We want to quit real quick. Uh, remember how I said you should run that F parameter? Since we don't have a model created for our users table, it won't bring that back for us. And I just want to show you how the generate script will bring back uh, tables, even though you don't have models created for them. So we want to run cake schema generate with that hyphen F parameter. 
and we want to create another snapshot and that creates schema underscore three dot php so we'll close out schema two and open up schema three here we go as you can see it comes back the full schema of our database including our users table uh, we don't want to edit posts or comments so I'm going to delete those out and we don't want to edit any of its current fields so I'm going to delete all of these fields here and let's try adding a new field to our users table let's make it name so they can enter their real name rather than just a username and we can set its type to be string and null set to false default set to null and length we'll make it 50 as well so now when we run the uh, schema command we're going to use the update command this time instead and that'll update our database and add this name uh, field to our users table so let's try it out this is for schema the snapshot number three so we can run cake schema update and use the s parameter and pass it snapshot number three and here you can say it's see it's comparing our database to the schema file it's going to alter our users table and add the name field to it it asks if we're sure we want to alter the table we'll say yes it changes it let's make sure here we can refresh and we see that we get our name field it's a var car with a 50 length so that's how you use cake php schemas uh, they work similar to migrations and it's a nice way to edit your databases without having to use sql you can just use php code so hopefully you found this useful and in the next video, we will use this users table along with the auth component to add a, uh, some login functionality to our application. Thanks for watching.